Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to learn how to use Figma to create graphic assets for your app. One of the really nice things about Figma is that you can use it on PC and Mac, and that's because it can be run completely in a browser window. They also have a desktop app if you prefer that. Another area which Figma shines in is that it's free for individuals. If you want more collaborators on a Figma project, then you're going to have to start paying. But for individuals, you can use all of the features completely for free. And personally, I've been using Figma for free for years. Now I'm going to go through all of the core and basic features in Figma that you're going to need to create graphic assets. However, I'm also going to get you to do your own practice because really that's the only way you're going to get good at this. I'm also going to warn you that with all of the things that I'm going to be showing you in this video, it might seem overwhelming. But the more time you spend inside Figma, the more exercises you do, like the ones following this lesson, the more app designs that you do inside Figma, the more comfortable you will be inside of it and the better you will become. Does that sound good? All right, let's get started. So the first thing to do is just to visit figma.com and sign up for a new account. It's going to be completely free for us to use. Uh, the only time you're going to have to pay is if you want to use the collaborative features as a team. And I think, yes, yeah, so for an organization, you can pay for a single person. Uh, I think $12 a month gives you some more perks. And, but for free, you can get three projects, two members, and uh, that's pretty, pretty good because you're going to find that this tool is very similar to Sketch. All of the capabilities, even the shortcut keys and the locations of where you'll find things, um, very similar. So if you're thinking about paying for Sketch, uh, you can take a look at this tool first and then decide. The other thing that's really cool about Figma is that it works on both Mac and Windows. You can also use it in the browser and you can also download desktop apps. In this demo, I'm just going to do it in the browser because it's a pretty low effort to do and that's most often how people will start using Figma. And once they use it a little bit, they'll go ahead and download the desktop app. So sign up for a new account and once you do, you're gonna jump into this area where you see all of your Figma files. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a new file. Just before I do that though, if you wanted to get the desktop app, you can go ahead and click this link here and it's gonna redirect you to the appropriate app for you. So let's start a brand new file and let's jump in. So when you open up your first Figma file, it's going to be a blank canvas. What you're gonna want to do is create a frame and that basically outlines the area for your design. So you can either press A on your keyboard for a shortcut key and that's going to open up a bunch of different default frame sizes for you. Or you can click this button here or pull down the drop down. Or well, rather, I'm already looking at the frame panel. So if I were looking at something else, uh, I can select. Okay, if I were looking at something else like this and you click this button up here, it's going to show you uh, the different frame templates. So I'm going to go ahead and click on iPhone 8 and it's going to create this frame for me to create my design in. I'm going to delete this default frame I accidentally created. All right, so that is my frame. And the concept of a frame, you can also think of it as a screen. So this would represent one screen in my app. And if I were to add another frame, that would be my second screen. And then you can go ahead and, and uh, title these if you double click the name right there. So this, for example, this could be my home screen and the second one could be like my profile screen or something like that. And actually I accidentally reversed the order. So it could be something like that. In order to navigate around, there is a zoom button up here. So you can go ahead and zoom in or out, zoom to fit, different percentage sizes and here are the shortcut keys plus and minus. To pan around on your canvas, you would hold down the space bar on your keyboard and you'd be able to drag around like that. You can also zoom by holding the command key and scrolling up or down and that is going to allow you to zoom in as well without touching this sort of view control here. Now we're going to get to inserting some shapes and text onto our frames. So go ahead, select this first frame and you can either click this icon here or you can use the shortcut keys as you can see here on the side. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of these shapes are very similar to Sketch. 
um, if you watched the last video, let's start by putting a rectangle in there. So select that and your mouse turns into these crosshairs and you can just draw a rectangle. If you hold down shift, it's going to force it to be a square. So go ahead and try that and try a couple of different shapes even. With a circle, for example, you can do an ellipse or if you hold down shift, it's going to be a perfect circle. You'll notice that as you're putting things into the frame, it appears here on the left hand side and this is sort of like a file navigator. It lets you see all of your shapes and all of your elements as layers on your frame. You can also rearrange these if you wanted, let's say, the circle over top the square. You could rearrange the layers here and we're going to talk about this right hand panel here in just the next section. But for now, I want to point out to you uh, how you can see all your shapes here. Uh, there some other handy features, you can toggle the visibility by clicking this eye next to the layer, or you could lock a certain layer by locking it like that, and then you're not going to be able to um, accidentally edit that shape, and you won't be able to select it. So this can be useful if you want to avoid modifying that specific element. Now let's try a piece of text, and that would be this text tool right here. So go ahead and click that. Um, click anywhere you want to add some text, and go ahead and type something. Then you can go ahead and rearrange that. So we talked about layers and how when you're adding these elements into your frame, they appear over on this left hand side and you can rearrange these different layers and uh, lock them and turn them, uh, toggle their visibility on and off. Um, now I want to talk about grouping. So for example, if this text and this square, you want to treat it as one component and you want them to move together. Um, let's say this represented some sort of profile picture or something like that. Uh, you can go ahead and select both of them and either press Command G for the shortcut key or just right click and choose group selection. Now once you do that, both of them appear as this group and let's say you can rename that as profile photo or something like that. And you can just drag them together as a unit like that. Now this is useful because you can go ahead and lock the entire group or you can toggle the visibility of the entire group and you can just keep those elements together, especially as your frame gets more and more layers and components on top of it. It's a good idea to start grouping things together that makes logical sense um, so that you can stay organized. The other reason you'd want to group some elements together is if you want to turn it into a component, which we are going to explain a little later on in this lesson. But for now, I want you to understand the concept of layers and the fact that you can group layers into groups like that. Now we're going to take a look at the right hand side of the screen. So we started here on the left. This is where you get to see everything in your Figma file from your frame to your individual groups and elements. If you select one of them, the details for what you selected appears on the right hand side and you can do a whole bunch of things with that element. For one thing up here, if you select two elements, you can align them together. So if I highlight both of these, I hold down shift and click both of them, I can go ahead and align left like that. Or let's say I wanted to uh, top align them together so that the tops of both elements uh, line up together. I could do that. And there's a whole bunch of other options. Let's go back to just selecting one thing. I can change the XY coordinates, the height width. This is the rotation, so I can play around with that. Uh, if you hover your mouse over uh, the label for the text box, you can actually just drag it. So you don't have to enter a number in there. You can go like that. Now this part is corner radius. If you have a box, let's say the square right here, and you want it to turn it into a rounded element, you can go ahead and drag that. Let's say I change this to... Uh, 20, you can see that it becomes a rounded square. There's a ton of things you can do here. You can change the color. Uh, here, this takes a little bit of explaining the constraints. So it's basically where you want that element to cling to if your frame size changes. For example, in this screen, uh, the default is left top. So you can see these sort of two anchors here. If I change this frame and I just kind of forcefully dragged it out, you can see that it clings to the top left. It doesn't matter how I change this. But for example, if I 
changed it to right top. You can see that now this line is here and this line is here. So if I change the frame size, it's going to cling to the top and right. So you can see how that clings on that anchor and that anchor point. Okay, so let me just undo this. All right, let's keep going. Let's change that back to the left top. Uh, we have fill. We can fill this with different colors. We have stroke, and this is just another name for border. So I can give it a red border, give it a blue border. Oh, I'm modifying the text here. Am I? Let's see. Oh, I'm modifying the whole group. That's why the stroke is being applied to the text and the shape. It's because I was changing the stroke on the whole group. See, if you want to apply styles to a whole group of elements, that's another reason why you would group them together. Let me undo that because I kind of just wanted to change the stroke on the rectangle. So I'm going to highlight that instead. And now I can do a stroke just on that guy. Let's change that to blue and let's set that to like four, just as an example. You can also do some effects. Let's see what we have here. Drop shadow. So you can see that. That's a really easy way to just put a shadow on something. Uh, you can blur something out. So if you have a photo or something like that and you want to add an effect, you can do a layer blur or a background blur. And finally, on this bottom part here, you'll notice an export section. And here you can dictate if you want to export this at uh, 1x, 2x, 3x, or all three. And you would add all of these different options. And it allows you to specify the formats and the suffixes. Because uh, for the iOS graphic assets, when you need all three sizes, the 2x and 3x versions have this suffix like this. And this works the same way in Sketch. You'll notice if you're coming from Sketch, this is all very familiar. And then at this point, if you wanted to export the shape, you could just click this button right here. Or when you're finished with your design, as long as you have all of these export settings for the elements that you want to export set, uh, you can just mass export everything. Now we talked about rotating, but in terms of scaling, uh, there is actually a tool here called scale and the shortcut key for that is K. But if you want to scale this square and you choose scale, what you're going to end up doing is just dragging the corners like that and it's going to scale. Now, one more thing I want to talk about are these buttons up here. So there are a couple of different options. Let me undo that. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, I wanted to open up this menu to show you union, selection, subtract, intersect, and exclude. Now, this is going to allow you to combine two different shapes together to create a new one. Uh, and you can play around with these different settings, but how you use them is, let's say you wanted to make this square and this circle into this new shape that looks like that. Right? And if you highlighted both of them and you clicked union selection, it would turn it into one shape. So that's one way you could play around with shapes. Uh, you can also subtract something. So for example, if I drew a rectangle like that and I wanted to exclude, I basically wanted to cut off this top part, I could do that and instead I could choose subtract selection and then you know I would get a shape that looked like that. So these tools up here are sometimes helpful. So for example, if you wanted to create like an arrow or something like that, or I could do that and then I could rotate this uh, 90 degrees. Uh, actually, it looks like I'll have to do 180. More than that. 270. Put them together like that and then highlight both of them and then click on Union. And then I would have my new arrow shape. Another button I want to talk about up here is called Mask. And this can be helpful if you want to uh, basically show a background through a certain shape. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and drag an image from my desktop into Figma. And yes, you can do that if you didn't know. Uh, let me try that again. Oh, there it is. OK, and it's covering my arrow now. Let me move the arrow on top by adjusting the layers. So let's say I wanted to show my mountain, but I wanted it in the shape of, of this guy right here. I can go ahead and select these two and then click on Mask. 
oops, let me do it the other way around. So the image actually has to be on top of my arrow there. And I click on mask and there it is. So if the term mask is confusing to you, think of the shape as a mask that your image is looking through. So the last thing I want to talk about in this Figma basics tutorial are components. Now, you might notice here, there is a button called create component and it kind of looks like this. And then down here on the lower left hand corner, you can browse your components by clicking this button. You can see we don't have any. And to go back to layers, you would click this button. Okay, so what are components? The idea is that a component is a common element that you use across uh, your different frames. So for example, we have this cool arrow that we created. And no, nope, I didn't want to move that. But I wanted to move these together. Let me just put this in a group. I can move it together. Let's say I wanted to use this arrow in a couple different frames. Well, I can, let's say, copy this and then go into my profile frame and then just paste it and I would have two copies. Well, the only problem with this is if I modify one of them. So let's say uh, I change, you know, I change the way that this looks to something like that, right? This doesn't affect all of them, right? This only affects this one. However, if instead I turned my arrow here into a component by clicking this button, you can see it turns purple. And if I go into my components tab, I will see this new arrow. And then I can go into my profile instead and just drag this arrow here. And what happens now is that when I modify this component, it updates anywhere this component exists. So I don't have different copies of the same element. Instead, I turned it into a component and I'm using that single component in multiple places. So for instance, if we go back to our layers tab now and I click on this component here, open it up and uh, let's say I shift the background a little bit. You can see that it updates, whoops, let's undo that. Just meant to shift it a little bit. You can see that it updates across all of the places where this component lives. So that's really powerful because for instance, oftentimes in your app, you're going to have multiple screens with uh, a tab bar. If your app has a tab bar and you want to update an icon on that tab bar, well, it would be great if that tab bar were a component. So the same tab bar across all your screens would update all at once instead of you having to go into each screen and update that icon you know, X number of times, depending on how many screens you have. So those are components in Figma. In Sketch, they have the same concept. It's called symbols. You're going to see us using a lot of these in the upcoming lessons. Okay, so what do you think? When I first started using Figma, I felt a little lost too, because knowing how to use the tool is one thing, but knowing how to use the tool to create nice looking graphics for your app is an entirely different thing, right? So that's why it's going to be really helpful for you to try the practice exercises in the next lesson to just get familiar with Figma and start using it to produce more practical graphic assets for your app. Just like coding, the more time you spend creating these graphics using Figma and just immersing yourself into design, the easier it's going to get, the more naturally it's going to come. With that said, I'll see you in the next lesson.